Hello. In the pre-industrial era, the working classes had little choice in how to earn a living. For most, the options were farmhand or domestic service. Servants shared some of the comforts and status of their employers, and providing they demonstrated competence, loyalty and due deference, arguably a greater degree of security than their counterparts in agriculture. There was a downside, of course. In his diary of 1837, footman William Taylor described his life as like a bird in a cage, well housed and fed, but deprived of liberty. Many domestic servants gave long service and generations of the same family served in some households. Food, accommodation and either clothing or an allowance was generally provided for live-in staff. A hierarchy existed below stairs as well as above. Senior servants played a vital role in the smooth running of a grand country house and might have their own servants. The role of footman in the medieval period was to carry messages, run errands and accompany their master or mistress when they were travelling, running ahead to make sure the way was clear and that preparations were made, food, accommodation and stabling for the arrival of their party. Physical fitness and stamina were important qualities looked for in a footman. In the 17th century, the Earl of Devonshire's 175 mile journey by coach from his London townhouse to country estate at Chatsworth in Derbyshire took six days. His footman, sent ahead to ensure the house was made ready, would accomplish the trip in half the time, sleeping rough along the way. In his tour of the whole of Great Britain, Daniel Defoe wrote of Staffordshire, the people of this county have been particularly famous and more than any other county in England for good footmanship, and there have been, and still are among them, some of the fleetest runners in England, which I do not grant to be occasioned by any particular temperature of the air or soil, so much as to the hardy breed of the inhabitants, especially in the moorlands or northern part of the county, and to them exercising themselves to it from their childhood. For running foot races seems to be the general sport or diversion of the county. There's a public house in Charles Street, Mayfair, a 1930s rebuild of a much earlier hostelry called the Only Running Footman, formerly I Am the Only Running Footman, which was the inspiration for the Junior Ganymede Club for Gentlemen's Gentlemen in P.G. Woodhouse's novel Much Obliged Jeeves. Perhaps inevitably, the gentry arranged races for their footmen and laid bets on the result. Such events were popular sporting occasions across all social classes. In his diary entry for August 10th, 1660, Samuel Pepys noted, I went by water to Whitehall to the Privy Seal, and that done with Mr Moore and Creed to Hyde Park my coach and saw a fine foot race three times around the park between an Irishman and Crow that was once my Lord Claypole's footman. Crow beat the other above two miles. And on May the 27th, 1663, the talk this day is nothing but the great foot race run this day on Banstead Downs between Lee, the Duke of Richmond's footman, and a Tyler, a famous runner. And Lee hath beat him, though the King and Duke of York and all men almost did bet three or four to one upon the Tyler's head. Celia Fines, who explored England on horseback and wrote about her travels, noted in 1701, I did drive through part of the forest of Windsor to see a race run by two famous footmen. The term flunky is thought to derive via Scots dialect from flanker, a descriptive name used for a footman accompanying a travelling horse-drawn wagon or coach. With better roads and speedier travel, by the close of the 18th century, the running footman had become obsolete. Rather than pacing alongside or running ahead, footmen travelled on the back of coaches. 
as well as athleticism, footmen were chosen for their appearance. Taller men were paid more. At Blenheim Palace, the minimum height requirement was six feet. Potential recruits are made to walk up and down to study their deportment. Footmen could do well for themselves. Thackeray's fictional Charles J. Yellow Plush didn't stretch credibility too much with his two liveries, 40 pounds a year, malt liquor, his washing done, silk stockings and wax candles. Dressing footmen in a colourful livery, a uniform identifying them with the family of their master and mistress, added status by affiliation. Footmen would typically be given new outfits annually. This is the ceremonial royal livery, worn by footmen attending Queen Elizabeth II's coach at the state opening of Parliament in 2008. When not required to attend coaches, footmen assisted the butler indoors. Next time, scandal, when social barriers between master and servant are crossed. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available. Or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.